Good morning, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? Can you please type a one in the chat box if you can hear me? And also, if you could see the shared screen, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, thank you so much, guys. Welcome to the open house. This is the last day of uh, our free event. Thank you so much for joining us. It has been a really interesting two days. We have received a lot of questions um, and a lot of positive feedback. So I do appreciate that. So welcome everyone. My name is Anka Metcalf and I'm the CEO and founder of tradeoutloud.com. I'm also the head trader at Trade Out Loud. I've been trading the markets professionally for 16 years and prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. And uh, let's get started with today's analysis. All right, oh, but before, let's take a quick second to review the risk disclaimer. All information provided today is for educational purpose only and should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any other instrument of any kind. Trade Out Loud is not an investment advisory firm. It's not registered investment advisor or broker dealer. We do not recommend or suggest which securities or currencies you should buy or sell. I'm pretty sure you know by now that trading involves a high level of risk it may not be suitable for all investors. You could lose money. Before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, and risk appetite. Individual performance depends upon each person's skills, time commitment, and effort. Results may not be typical, and individual results will vary. You must do your own research and make your own trading decisions. All right, so with that being said, I also do not take any questions in the first two hours of the day. This is the sweet spot where most of uh, the trades are lining up. The way you will be receiving the trades, if there, are, if there is going to be a really fast paced market environment, I will communicate all the parameters on the microphone. So make sure you pay attention. First two hours are very, very aggressive. And uh, typically, there is a lot of momentum that is going on, especially in the first 30 minutes. If the momentum is very dynamic, I repeat, all the trade announcements will be made over the microphone. If time permits, around 10 o'clock to 10.30, all the trades will be also typed into the chat box. Obviously, I want to get in the trade myself, and uh, I will make sure that I communicate clearly the entry parameter, the stop parameter, and the target parameters. And if you should have any questions, feel free to ask them uh, when this, uh, um, typically at around 11 o'clock and after 11 o'clock, okay? So we are very focused on watching price action in the first two hours of the morning. Now this trading session is from nine o'clock in the morning until 4 p.m. Eastern. We will have a lunch break between 12 o'clock and two o'clock p.m. Eastern. I do not trade within those uh, intervals. If we should be in a trade within that interval, I will be on the map on the microphone, depending on the momentum of the market, if it will be a fast paced market, we will skip the lunch break. And if we have entered into a trail phase, obviously I'm gonna be here trailing the trades. If we are not at any trades, we will have lunch break, normal regular hours between 12 o'clock and two o'clock. Back at two o'clock, we will look at the market and we will take a decision whether uh, we have a continuation or whether we should have some trades that will be lining up uh, for the afternoon trading session. We will do a little bit of recap of what happened in the morning. We will do a little planning for the afternoon trading session. 
And uh, other than that, towards the end of the trading session, we will do uh, a course demo. I will talk to you about the course that we will begin next week on Monday. All right. So that's about from three o'clock to four o'clock or so. But depending on the market environment, last week we had an open house. And we had a lot of trades in the afternoon trading session. It's not very typical for me to take trades in the afternoon trading session, but we did have a very active market. I don't know how the market is gonna to behave today. We're also going to have the role in the indices, and uh, that's why the market is very, very hawkish. I was in a trade from yesterday that I stopped out last night, and now the trade is back up. Okay, because it did a shakeout. Usually when you have ranges that develop throughout the trading session, you oftentimes have a shakeout and then they rotate back up. I was talking with someone last night and I was mentioning the fact that it's so untypical that we haven't had a shakeout within yesterday's ranges. But there is one index that did not have a shakeout and that's Russell. Russell was one of the weakest indices yes in yesterday's trading session and uh, has developed incredible strength throughout, uh, throughout the day yesterday. And in fact, it did not execute any kind of shakeout. Um, T. Lee, you're right. There are no major announcements for the trading day today, which means that we should have smooth sale, smooth transition into the new contract. And also, the, the, we're going to be trading the September contract. We're still trading right now the June. Right now, the June. Um, there's still open interest in these um, right at this moment. And uh, let's begin our pre-market game planning and see what we have going on. All right, there was obviously news. I posted on my, private, uh, on my public feed on Twitter. If you guys are not following me, I provide a lot of information there, analysis, trade ideas, what have you, everything market related. And uh, there was news, there was uh, uh, crude news, oil news, and uh, it made the price pop higher. It is interesting enough that all these uh, releases, all these news events that are impacting oil are conveniently popping up exactly at our fib line. And last week on Thursday, we discussed and we actually had a long and crude and uh, <clears throat> it popped over the 61.8% FIB. Now, as you can see, and we're going to talk a little bit about crude right now. As you can see, crude is trading in between and it has support resistance within FIBs, right? Well, 50% is not a FIB, it's just a 50% retracement from the prior swing low to the prior to the swing high. So it doesn't represent a FIB, but yet it is a level of resistance from that 50% retracement. 50% retracement is very important for price. 61.8% uh, bounce into last week. This is where we went long and uh, price came back down to retest the pivot. You can see that we have not made a new low right here. We, had, uh, we actually had the low into $50.00. Uh, into fifty dollars and uh, sixty cents, and we have revisited the low right here. Now crude is into resistance at the fifty-three, uh, fifty-three, uh, forty level. This is why you're seeing a bit of um, a bit of a pullback. We also have uh, natural gas numbers at ten thirty as an economic announcement, and natural gas is also sitting on that seventy-eight point six percent, and uh, it. It's awaiting a decision at that point, okay? That is the point where um, natural gas may decide, depending on price action, uh, may decide to continue its trajectory higher or revisit the 68% and uh, break the prior low that was established um, last week and continue its trajectory lower. All right. So game plan for crude, not at the moment, right? We, you had the first, you had the first um, potential rotation at the 51.50 level. This is target achieved, okay? This is target achieved. 
uh, based on current price action, I'm gonna navigate down to the one hour chart and you can see that it has entered into a one hour sell, okay? This was just a news breakout. Now we have to see if the momentum remains sustained. You can see that the momentum has been damaged through uh, the London session, okay? Nearing resistance into the 5350. So there's no shift in momentum right now, okay? So there's no continuation higher. Than, this is a no touch crude at this point. It is a no, no, no touch, all right? Uh, for me at least. So this is my market bias for today and my pre-market planning for today. Uh, gold, this is the four hour chart. I left it here to cut the noise out. Uh, and as you can see, gold is still trading into an uptrend. Let me just give it a little bit more um, space here, a little bit more data. We have pivoted off the 23 level. We have continued higher. We had a swing here um, the other day. Completion to target into 40 and 42. And we had the pullback. Current support level for gold is 1333. The breakout area is over these highs into the 42s. Oftentimes when I watch for the breakout, I'm watching price action to see its momentum, to feel the momentum. When I call a trade, I don't put a limit order immediately here because I need to see the momentum. And you can see that the momentum has pulled the price back in, back into the 10 exponential moving average. So it's not enough to have a trigger. It's you have to watch price action and how price action is behaving at that price point. If it's breaking in a, uh, with, you know, if it has certain parameters that actually we teach in class, okay, then yes, you can put in a limit order there and you can rest assured it's gonna get filled. And, uh, you know, it's going to continue higher. But there's a lot more that needs to be watched than a setup or a strategy. Trading is not about one strategy and it's not about a setup. It's about how you combine everything into trading. This is what makes it so interesting. Very few traders know how to combine absolutely everything into trading and make trading work. All right. And let's begin with the indices right now. And uh, we're going to um, navigate and start with YM, but not before, not before uh, I mentioned the fact that I do have some alerts here in the room that I have posted. I have a swing trade idea for AMD. If you guys have logged in later in the room, if you're missing out on these, this information, we call some trades long. These are the parameters. Let me just type them here again. This is AMD. Okay, and if we have time later on, we can talk about AMD and we can talk about swing trade idea and Apple. We wanna see these trades start going. All right, and then, there we go. And another watch in XLF. Uh, remember that we want to see financials on our side. Yesterday, financials were in a pullback phase. We need to see the financials on our side. Um, Ron, if you logged in after 9 o'clock, you're not going to see them, but here they are. Okay, here they are. All right, so remember, everybody has to log in at 9 o'clock. In the room, the room opens a little bit before nine o'clock and starting with nine o'clock, I start posting um, important elements for the trading day in the room. All right, let's begin right now with uh, the Dow, right? Because we're talking about day trading. Okay, so what we have going on in the market and uh, I was long yesterday. I was long at 26.35, uh, I was filled at 38 got slipped on the fill, and I had a stop into the 50, uh, 54. This was my hard stop into the 54. I was not willing to give it more room. And this is because we were violating the daily, 
As you can see right here, yesterday, we ha um, the day before yesterday, we had a topping tail doji. We navigated just slightly lower in yesterday's trading session. Let me just zoom in so you can see the candles, what I'm talking about. So if my yesterday's low and I gave it a, I gave it a considerable room, okay? If my low yesterday uh, would not have held, the potential of a run back into the 800 would have been on the table, would have been possible for follow through all the way to 800. So that's what stops are for. And especially when the market had a big rally to the upside, you had five days up, one, two, three, four, five. You had five days up. And we mentioned the fact on Monday that this is going to be a decision day. We pretty much, uh, had an idea that we were heading into choppy territory and we had follow through to the downside ever so slightly on the 11th and a little bit of continuation onto, uh, onto the 12th. We were expecting a pullback within this phase. However, because we were holding the 50 SMA zone and we were trading into an area of minor support deriving from this prior pivot high, we were still bullish on the day. And obviously, if we were broken above the 26,100, this would have been extremely bullish, right? So look what happened in last night's trading session. In last night's trading session, I'm going to go back to the hourly charts. In last night's trading session, we had news from China. Can you believe it? This is, this is the protest from China. This is how you're trading. This is 2019 trading, okay? 2019 trading. Notice that there, there was a bit of a spike in the volume, but not considerable spike in the volume, not anything conducive that the market may potentially rotate or even continue lower. So at this point, okay, trading is extremely, and you have to be extremely careful in your, in this trading environment, extra caution last year, extra caution this year. And this is going to be the theme as we're moving forward into 2019, into the third, fourth quarter, and going into next year. Next year, we have election year. So it's going to be a bit challenging. It's not gonna be very easy trading. Typically, pre-election years and election years are bullish. And so far, we have, uh, we have had a really tremendous positive year this year. Okay, so we're still uptrending. We're still uptrending on the daily charts. We're still uptrending on the weekly charts. We're still uptrending on the monthly charts. These gyrations are produced by news. We're going to have tariffs. They're going to be front and center focus. One tweet, and it's going to send the market either higher or lower. So it, it is a difficult trading environment. So I stopped out of the trade. Okay, I stopped out of the trade last night. It was a hands-off trade. I had my orders. Uh, I had my stop placed. I had my targets placed. And I had targets into the 80s. I had a plan, I had a, uh, a plan that if the price would have reached the 80 zone, 80 zone, here's the 80 zone achieved here at three o'clock in the morning at the London session, I would have brought my price to break even. But this had to happen. China had to happen. China has to happen, okay? So anyways, rotated back up. We're trading back into target levels from yesterday's trading session. This is yesterday's trading session right here, all right? We finally made it to a 75 last night, and then we pulled back hard on the news. Consolidation through the Asian session, European session, most of European countries open at 2 p.m. Uh, 2, uh, 2 a.m. Eastern, 3 a.m. London kicks in with the majority of volume and takes the price back into target. We had target into 100 and 120. It ran exactly to the 120 level. In fact, it printed a 123. All right. So where does uh, where do we stand now, and what is our game plan? We're still in a sideways range. The parameters are zoomed out right now. So we have support into the last night's uh, into last night's pivot low into the twenty five eight eighty five, and we have resistance back into the one twenty. 
We break above 120, we are bullish with a chance of a turbulent continuation higher back into the 130 to 140, 150, 175, and back into the 200. And if we reach the 170 to 200 level, we have strong odds in our favor that we may potentially continue higher into the 250 zone and possibly into this gap up high from Sunday at uh, 289. All right, so we're bullish on this mini setup right here. Current support is going to be the 26050. Current support, 26050. Current resistance is at these highs into the 26130. So this is the cluster that is going to be in focus this morning. We break above the high, we're gonna continue higher. We break below the low, we're, gonna, we're probably not gonna have a trade within these parameters, okay? So we're gonna be looking for a breakout. I hope we're not gonna get a fake out like yesterday. Yesterday the market, bam, broke out. And by the way, yesterday when I called the trade, uh, actually before the market opened, so it was around this time when I called the trade, and I said, this is the long, we don't have any econ that is gonna influence the price, we can go ahead and we could just take the trade. We took the trade, it achieved targets in the first, I don't know, a couple of, few seconds. It reached 80 and it reached 100. It happened so fast, it happened so fast that I really didn't have the time to say, bring your stops up and take profit at 100. There were some traders in the room that already had orders in at 80 and 100 and got out because I'm on the microphone, I'm typing, I'm talking, I'm taking my orders as well. I got slipped on my order. Uh, so um, I was late to the game. So I was still stuck in the trade. And so were some other traders in the trading room. We were stuck in the trade. So we were stuck all day until we stopped out last night. That's fine, right? All right, so this is with YM. This is the planning for YM. Let's take a look at the m and &E SMP. The m and &E SMP shakeout took the price down into the 2866. The price did back up, trading above resistance into the 2890 zone. 2890 was one of the target levels uh, in the overnight trading session. And right now is uh, setting up a little base with support level into prior resistance. Right now is trading into minor support zone at the 2886. The breakout can happen over 95, and if the, if the price is gonna achieve 95, it may potentially ride higher into the 2900 and back into, uh, back into Monday's highs. Monday's highs of uh, 29.05 and 29.11.5. Notice that there is something different about the S&P chart. It, and uh, the fact is that we have made a new high compared to the gap up on Sunday, gap up resistance on Sunday. We made a new high. And right now we're pretty much trading at the same level with that resistance high in the mini S&P. So game plan is easy, easy. We need to hold the 85, 86 zone and we need to blast over 95. All right, let's uh, take a look at NASDAQ, and I'm not gonna be short bias just yet. <clears throat> um, NASDAQ, NASDAQ has, no, has not yet triggered a, a full daily reversal, and it still has overhead resistance from the 50 SMA on the daily. You could see it right here, so it's trapped. 75.55 is going to be the big resistance area. It needs to trade above the 75.55 in order to start progressing higher to 76. We had a nice rotation off of the shakeout and uh, the price transitioned higher back into the prior resistance. And this was from Tuesday's price action activity. Tuesday's resistance is into the 75.30 zone. We break over 30. We may have odds for a high odds for a continuation higher into the 7550 and back into these highs right here into the 7580s. Notice that the price is trading well below the gap up resistance from Sunday. And actually, the gap up resistance is forming support on the one hour chart. 7485 is the new support level developed by the gap up resistance. Let's, uh, let's continue with Russell. 
okay? Russell is the only index that has not shaken out last night. It started as one of the weakest indices, NASDAQ and Russell in yesterday's trading session. We had a lot of volatility in the first five minutes of the morning in Russell, and Russell was punching that support line often, was just punching it, punching it, punching it lower. At one point in time, it started rotating very violently to the upside, and it was the one index that executed the 30-minute reversal, the one-hour reversal, and the four-hour reversal. It was the strongest indice on the map. And right now, it's the only index that has not taken out and has not, uh, ha has not taken out the support level that was developed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay, so this is the support zone. You can see that the alert is, see, is still here. Even, it, even though it shook out, right? This is still a shakeout. This is the news, right? There's nothing we could do in the news. The best thing to do is to still use hard stops. If you have clusters of support, we may be considering alternate stops, or we may give it a little bit more room to accommodate a possible shakeout. But in this case, when you're trading the overnight and when you're carrying the trade in the overnight, because you're not hands-on like you are in the New York trading session or you are when you're trading live in front of your computer, right? It's an overnight trade. Your computer is off, you go to bed. You have to have a hard stop. You can wake up and you can definitely see the market down. You could see the Dow down, I don't know, 400 points. What are you going to do then? It's hard to recover from a big loss like that. It's easier to take a small loss, try to get back in. We have the same shelf of support um, into the uh, 1525 and 1530 is going to be the line in the sand. It breaks over 30 and may have room to accelerate higher back into the 35. It trades over 35. Uh, it still has some room into the 40s, but 40s represent a lot of resistance from the 200 simple moving average on the daily chart. This is the daily chart. You can see it right here has a lot of resistance right here, okay? All right, guys, this is the pre-market game plan. We have about two minutes. I have to get my charts ready for trading. Remember, we don't take questions into the first two hours of the morning. We're just focused on trades right now. Uh, guys, if you do not see the prior post, that is because you logged in after 9 o'clock. They were posted at 9 o'clock. There were two swing, trade, two swing trades ideas that were posted. Here they are. All right. Good luck, everyone. We have one more minute to the open. Uh, Seymour, do not log out and log back in because you're, uh, you're losing all the history. All the typing. Here it is again, guys. All right. We're not expecting any Akon today. Charts are a bit messy going into the open. In terms of relative strength and relative weakness, we do have a balance throughout the indices today. We're open. Um, Seymour, do you see the text now?
The ranges are a bit wide. <laughs> okay, do you want? Right out of the gates, Russell. We're still trading, um, I'm watching the Dow here, still trading minor support zone is into the 26060, still fragile, as it has an open void all the way to 26027, which is, uh, which is quite a considerable void here. So if we break below this 70 level, we can accelerate lower into the 40s, <clears throat> but this is not a short, so I'm looking to the long side. Current parameters on these ranges, uh, YM that I'm, that I'm watching, YM over 125. The risk can be into 0, 060. Very choppy start. Put this on the five minute here. So um, even though I'm using a tighter time frame uh, at the open, it doesn't make sense to watch that all that garbage on the two. This breakout here over 123. They're still holding the ranges. Then the, the way I see it, uh, the Dow and the SME are, are, are a little bit more structured. So on focus is YM over 125 right now. Not an order yet. 
watching price action. I like why I'm over 125. Herb, I sent you a, a message here. 125, guys, why I'm long 125. Why I'm long 125. Why I'm long 125. Let's go. I don't have time to post. 150 target, 150 target. Target one, target two is gonna be into 162. Hold it, hold it, hold it. The stop for now is 075. I'm in, stay in, stay in, not changing the stop, not lifting the stop. Here's that 125, 126, if you could get it back in, if you didn't get in. 125, the stop right now is 26, 075, 26. No, give it room, give it room. Let's use a stop, let's you. no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Use 26.068 for now. Target is 150, I'm gonna type it right here. 161, 200, and the rest by trailing if we get there. If we get there, okay? Stay on my queue. The parameters are already typed in. Stay on my queue for trailing. 114 holding right now. So entry, 125, stop, 26068. If you wanna use a tighter stop, you can use 26068. Uh, 079 or 260075. Thanks so much, Herb. We have targets right now into 50 and 56. <laughs> Better than last night. We have 10 more points into the target one level. At target one, everybody placing the stop and break even. All right, so when you see 150 print, you bring the stop to break even. Wow, Russell is incredible. I'm keeping my stop for now at 26068. Alternate stop, everybody's different. If you wanna use a tighter stop, it's 26075. Like I said, I'm using the 68. I'm using the 26068. That's the bottom of the range right here. Notice that YM broke above the high, right? The S&P did not break over the overnight high and neither did NASDAQ. We have Russell that broke above the overnight high. So we have two indices that are stronger and two indices that are just meandering and flirting with the highs. 
We need to see a print of 42 right now in order to start progressing higher. We need to see 26,142 print in order to start progressing higher. Come on, 142s. needs to digest this um, this area. Uh, we're having uh, the 120 level is resistance from Tuesday overnight. That's what we're digesting digesting right now. 1 hour breakout is the 124. The rotation came over 116. And 116 is a heavy area of resistance. All right, we need to see now a print of 132. And then 136. And then 142 in order to start progressing higher. One twenty five again. We're trying to hold one minute minor support at one fourteen. We really need to see that one three two print twenty six one three two. Nine forty three. We have two minutes into the first minor reversal, so we should be kicking in a little bit higher now. All right, one thirty two print. There it is. We're getting into that one thirty five, one thirty six level. We need to see a print of one forty two, and then we can continue to one fifty. We have room to 150 and 156. 150, 156. All further targets are gonna be by trailing. So we have 150, 156, 160, 161, and then we'll see if we can hold it on further. Depends on momentum. We desperately need that 142 print in order to start Pressing the pedal to the metal here. In fact, we need 143. We're not that far away. S&P needs 95. Here it is. We're going higher. There it is. There it is. It printed a 149. We are one point from target one. Large accounts, you can start scaling out at 150. Scale out 150. You're gonna have at least three, two or three more uh, targets along the way. Bam, 150. 
150 in the bag. 150 in the bag, guys. Lock in. Lock in some at 150. Carry the rest. You know the drill. Place your stops at break even. Uh, yeah. Herb. We're into a lot of resistance here into between 150 and 161. Oh, uh, no, no. It's too small. Yeah, thank you, Herb. Yes. If you have a very, very, very tiny account, um, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Like I said, if you have a very tiny account and if you want to lock in a little bit more, I'm going to give you, and this is a, just a suggestion. This is not something that I would do. But if you're looking for very small scalpable targets, you can lock in 10 points. Okay? You can lock in 10 points. If you're trading momentum, if you're trading momentum, thank you so much, Herb. If you're trading momentum, then you're locking in 10 points. I'm not doing that. Okay. Just giving you a heads up. There are different styles of traders and you could, you find yourself within, um, within what we trade right now. We have to stop at break even 26, 125. So now we have a risk free trade, risk free trade. Okay, out, out our break even. That's why you lock in a part of it, okay? So this is just, the gain is one and a half hours. Oh, uh, well, half an hour, I'm sorry. Half an hour, right? We took half the profits at 50, and for the rest, we trailed out at break even, which is fine. We're gonna to have to look for a different entry right now. We're back into the one minute support. We're testing the five prior five minute low. I'm noticing NASDAQ is holding the 20, uh, uh, the 25 level. And uh, these are the gyrations that are coming in from the 945 timing. And in fact, we have reached resistance here. That's why I wanted to take off some at 50. See the 50 level? We're trading into this cluster right here from the one hour.
swing trade idea uh, in NVIDIA long. NVIDIA long over 149, stop under 145.60, targets into 150, 152. And there is another third target, but we will discuss that later on. Um, it has room to progress into the 155 and 155.50. To daily buy setup. Amazon has already triggered a uh, daily buy setup. Baba already into the same type of pattern trading. Same as Caterpillar has triggered today. Home Depot as well. Disney running higher. We have Disney from last week. Boeing close to triggering. Apple, I, I mean, a Apple and Video are my, uh, my favorites and obviously AMD. These are the calls for today for swings. Um, we're trading into a 15 minute sell into all the, in, uh, into why I'm here, uh, not all the indices, uh, Russell as well as into that, uh, sell pattern. And so is, uh, the S and P. So this may suggest some, a bit further, um, pullback right here. And, uh, uh, NASDAQ is stronger throughout, has a stronger structure. We have to be very careful, guys, because we're trading in the last day of the uh, last day before the roll. So things are going to get extremely whippy today. Five minute rotations. Um, um, Herb, same size. Why am long? Same size. One twenty eight. One twenty eight by one oh eight. One twenty eight by one oh eight. Why am long? One twenty eight. It's at one twenty seven. One twenty eight by one oh eight. One twenty eight by one oh eight. In fact, keep the stop, keep the stop at 104, 104. This is very aggressive, guys, but it has a tight stop. Uh, target is back into 150. And this is based on the synchronicity that we're having from uh, Russell S&P and uh, the fact that we have a quite strong NASDAQ. Hmm. 
Keep the stop hard. Hard stop 104. <clears throat> hard stop 104. Because it's into a cell pattern. Like I said, this is super, 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 super aggressive. Keep the heart, uh, keep the heart stop. Wow, it's hanging by a thread there. Wow. Um, I'm tempted to give it a little bit more room to 100 here. Yeah, let's give it room to 100. Room to 100, guys. Why well, am stop under 100? So give it a 99. Give it a 99. We need to see a print of 30, 30 and 32 in order to start progressing higher. The trigger point is going to be 32 again now because of that doji on the five minute. We're entering the chop zone. Keep the stop at 26.099. Hard stop. Don't give room. <clears throat> they started to pull in. I don't think this is going to hold here.
We see a print of 112. It's going to start moving a little bit higher. And then we need 127. Let's see if we hold here. Doesn't look that way, but it was a perfect five minute rotation. So this is the first five minute, uh, five minute um, reversal that still in progress right now. Still in progress. constructive. Now we need to see a print of 125. Out. All right, this is the 10 o'clock uh, reversal time, and it is hard pullback here into, um, into YM. All right, let's talk about the 10 a.m. levels. We have support at 26080, and we have the high all the way into the 150. Into 10 o'clock, we're visiting the 10 a.m. lows into the 180. This is not conducive for a continuation higher. We're still trading within a range, except uh, and basically uh, today we can experience lots of chop because of the roll. 10 a.m. low for the M&E &E S&P is 28.88. The high is 28.96.5. We're trading in the core of the range into the 28.90. So we're still holding uh, the upper band, uh, the upper part of the range. NASDAQ, strongest index. We do have uh, the 10 a.m. low into the 74.97 and the high into the 36. We're trading in the upper side of the band. In fact, we're holding right now that 75.20 is minor support for NASDAQ. NASDAQ still has not pulled in into the 75.20 zone. Russell. Low, New York trading session low, 10 a.m. low, 1525, 10 a.m. high, 1535. We're trading in uh, the minor support zone into the 1530. Relative weakness from the Dow today. Revisiting the overnight resistance lows that started at 5 a.m. The support zone tested at 5 a.m. Yeah, definitely. All right, so right now YM is going to uh, is is setting up for a uh, for an overnight fail on the gap. It's trying to erase the progression that happened in the overnight trading session. There's news coming in, ex-Trump's officials Flynn and Gates subpoenaed by the House Intel Committee. Here we go, trading the news again. Technicals don't matter when you have news. You're going to have huge swings when news occurs, but it's it's just going to be a temporary um, change, shift in price. But structure-wise, we're still going to remain the same. All right, now all we have to do is sit and wait. The one hour is coming in, and we, we are retesting minor support zones into YM. YM may continue lower into the 26050 and even back into the 26020.
Exactly. T, 100% right. You couldn't have said it any, I couldn't have said it any better. It is the unreported news that kills, uh, that kills the market, kills us in the markets. That's what happened with my trade last night. I stayed in the New York trading session. And in fact, uh, um, yesterday in the afternoon, we had so much unreported news, so much unreported news. And it was just popping up. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. And th this is not good for the market. The market does not like uncertainty. The market likes to trade in a pretty stable environment. It doesn't like these really crazy swings. I mean, look what, what I mean, I'm going to ask you guys a question. What has fundamentally changed in the structure of the U.S. economy that made the price shift from this high in YM from 154 all the way to the 26050 right now. What? Nothing. It's all about news right now. It's all about news. All right, we're going to have to wait. Definitely NASDAQ, a little bit stronger here. Reacting off the 200 SMA on the five minute. See that 68 support level did not hold from the pre-market. It broke that level, came in below that 040 zone.
A uh, quick comeback in NASDAQ, so definitely NASDAQ much stronger. Dan, we're still trading in a very, very bullish market environment. The monthly chart, the weekly chart, nothing has happened to the structure of those uh, really of that really strong market. Even the daily is fighting it. And the daily right now, let me bring the chart up. The daily chart is trading into this minor support zone. So it's finding, uh, it's finding a nice shelf of support here. It's not giving up. Okay, it's not giving up. Even though we discussed last week in the trading room that I would like a pullback, and even in the video that was issued this weekend uh, and that I post on YouTube every weekend, we had the pullback. I was expecting a pullback into the 25,800, and that would have been easy because if we would have progressed nicely, this would have been a really nice pullback into the 800. But the market is still, I mean, take a look at what's going on right here. We're still, this is still a doji. This is still very bullish. If we end the day like this, if tomorrow we're gonna trade over this high, so if we do nothing in the meantime throughout the trading session today, if we maintain the lows and the highs that we have established through the overnight trading session and through today, let's say till now at 10 o'clock, Tomorrow is going to be a bullish day contingent on the price breaking 170. And this will launch the price much higher back into the 25,500. So it's going to open, a, uh, open up about a three to 400 point uh, range for the Dow. And uh, the same for the M&E S&P. Absolutely the same scenario. So the M&E S&P, again, very strong. All right, take a look. It's still holding into this prior high into May 16th, and it's basing here. So this is a very strong pattern that we have here. So they're defending the support levels. They're defending, uh, they're defending the 75 levels. We punched through the 75, and the price zipped back up immediately. Uh, and if we trade, let's say if we close the day in a sideways manner, okay, just like, and, and we're pretty much trading within the same parameters, Tomorrow, if we break over 2,900, we're, uh, we're moving higher. Over 2,900, we're gonna be moving higher and we're gonna move towards the 2,950. So we have, that opens the door for about 50 points to the upside, okay? There's nothing, absolutely nothing on this chart that suggests that there is a bearish market, nothing. So we had a high last year, uh, we came in, this was a range, as scary as this was, this was a very calculated pull into the market, and then the market snapped back up into these highs. And of course, you're gonna expect some gyrations right here because we're trading into resistance zones. And until the market calibrates, the revisit into the lows here was actually a double bottom into the 2724. We haven't even tapped onto that, okay? We haven't even top, tapped onto that because we, uh, the low here was 28. So we still had four more points into that low. So we rotated very uh, aggressively and we took out this high ASAP. Like you could see two days we were trading above this high right here. So typically when the price is hitting resistance, it either blasts immediately and then it needs some time. It needs a couple of days at least or a few days to consolidate. Why? Why does it need that consolidation? So, uh, so the price digests the prior high and the fact that we're not getting a pullback means that we are digesting the high to do what? To push higher, okay? Because if we wanted to pull in hard, last night based on the news, we could have had the selling machines that were an institutional sellers in Asia and the London, uh, London traders. I'm talking about the institutional traders. They would have drove the price lower if they would have wanted to but they're holding on to their size. They're holding on to their, um, um, uh, to their positions, right? They're not, they're not scaling out yet. And you can see the footprints on these charts, right? There is nothing that is telling us here that we're gonna be bearish. 
And we have to trade the bullish side until proven otherwise, especially in the swing market, right? All right, let's take a look at some stocks and uh, let's wait for, the, for some setups to emerge into, uh, into, 11, uh, into 1030. All right, Apple trading, 195.98 is up $1.80 on the day, 0.98%. Google up 12 bucks, 1.13%. Amazon up 20 bucks, over 1% up. Facebook inside day. If Facebook is going to trade over yesterday's high, high, if it's going to trade over 179, I could see a strong potential for a continuation higher into the 182 and possibly into the top of the range into the 184. So just to be clear, Apple has immediate strong targets to the upside, like I've mentioned, but it also has a tradable voice to 200 and 211 dollars, and that is the bigger. Those are the bigger targets for Apple. Okay, we're going to talk more as the trade progresses into the trading room about that. All right, we have some five-minute setups that are trying to line up right here. If these setups are going to work, we're going to try to. Built on those. Now, remember, we had a shallow five-minute uh, five setup that did not really work in the market. Right now, I'm watching the mini S&P. Uh, the, the risk is 85. The trigger may be over 90. So it has a five-point risk at this point. Could it be 90 by 85. Okay, Herb, I sent you a little note. All right, let's do. So ES or MES long, 2990, uh, 2890, I'm sorry, 2890. Stop, 2885. Target, 28.95 and 2,900 if we get there. We're gonna be focusing more on small targets and we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to choke the trades. Okay, as they're progressing, I think today's not going to be a, uh, it's not going to be one of those follow through days. I have a feeling it's going to be a choppy, choppy, messy day. We have nine minutes left to 1030. First hour of the New York trading session, brand new 15 minute, 30 minute candles. Thirty minute candles are uh, and thirty minute charts are not looking that healthy. <laughs> not looking good at all. All right. This trade is gonna be in line with the 10 o'clock reversal time. 29.90 is the trigger. Twenty-eight ninety. Did I say twenty-nine ninety? I'm sorry about that. Twenty-eight ninety. Twenty-eight 
Walmart, new high. For those of you that are in Walmart from last week, I, I know we talked about Walmart. I did not get a chance to get into the stock. You could trail 107.80, 107.80. Just printed a new high. It's amazing. Disney gapped up today. We're in Disney long. At 136.50. It's trading right now at 138.35. Boeing getting no love today. We're one point away from trigger in how many SMP? Intel, looking good, Intel. I'm gonna have to look later at it. We're three ticks away from the trigger, two ticks away from the trigger. We're in. Sorry about the noise, guys. It's the lawn people if you hear any noise. Place your heart stops. What a messy day. Price is fighting really hard here to try to get a, above that price line. Dale, because Dow represents the trigger. You have the confirmation that the price is getting ready to commit for higher prices. If you take it in the middle, that's no commitment. You're often going to get stopped out because you're taking it at a random place. There's going to be some turbulence into the 92 and 92.50, just a heads up.
back to break even. So Dale, we need to see price confirmed that it is ready to commit for higher. If you take it in the middle, what does that represent? Just the middle of the range. It doesn't confirm that it's ready to commit higher or lower. You have to take the trades at trigger prices. That's what drives them either higher or if they break below for lower. What are, we're, we are getting reversal in all the indices right now. We have issued a continuation on the five minute chart and we have a 15 minute reversal in progress right now. This is the trigger on the 15 minute 92. It is 1030. And why am I stuck into resistance from the overnight trading session lows? Much better workable pattern for the m and &E SMP for Russell and for NASDAQ. Here's that resistance that I've been telling you guys about into the 92, 92, 50. We have to, uh, we have to break over and we have to see a print of 93, 50 in order to start moving higher. We're trading within the 15 minute uh, reversal right now. So we have a higher time frame on our side. So we need to hold the uh, 2885 still in order to progress higher. Come on market. Technicals should be kicking in.
Dale, the stop is 2885. It's posted in the room. All right, we're digesting that 92, uh, 92 guys, 92, 92 and a half area. We need to start progressing higher. You're welcome, Dale. Nine, uh, 95 area, guys, is also a 30 minute rotation. 95 represents a 30 minute rotation in ES or MES. Herb, you and me both. <laughs> It's a reversal, Gordon. It can trigger the 30 minute high. Very nice, Gary. That's true. Let's hope it keeps on the momentum. <laughs> Herb, do you have any? I have emojis for that. <laughs> All right. All right, it's this uh, 92 and a half area that is just, um, just has a lot of resistance on price. It's gonna gyrate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I don't really wanna choke the trade with a stop at a break even right now, but if you have a smaller account size, you may consider putting the stop at break even. This is something just, you know, depending on your trading plan, I, I'm leaving my original stop. I'm trading into the 15 minute projection for a higher. Um, the price has issued a continuation pattern towards 95 pro, uh, target level. Um, and thank you, Gary, two minute fired up. And also the 30 minute, if we get into the 95 area, is gonna trigger that 30 minute rotation that may propel the price higher and we will have uh, we will have targets into uh, 96. So over 95, we have an additional target at 96, and then we are going to have a bit of turbulence into the 96.50. But then we have room for progression higher into the 97 and 97.50. 97 is going to be a huge target. Okay, just so you know, 97 is going to be a huge target if we get there.
We typed in a 93. Now we need to see a print of 93.50 in order to start progressing to 94. We need a 93.50 uh, 93 print. We need a print of 93.50. Absolutely, her. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. We need a ninety three point five. Ninety three point five. I'm actually going to put the alert here. That's what we need. We need to see a print of this number in order to start progressing higher to our target. Russell is holding. We have synchronicity. We have a little bit of weakness into the Dow. Uh, that's because Boeing is down a dollar and a half, 0 0.44%. Uh, we have a flat UNH. And we pretty much have a flat Intel, Caterpillar, uh, Cisco, um, Pfizer, Merck, healthcare, so healthcare, Procter & Gamble flat, triple, 3M flat, uh, but we do have some uh, strength in Goldman Sachs uh, up $1.5% here. Uh, Disney is up nicely, but Pfizer and Pfizer and Merck are doing uh, daily sell, are in daily sell patterns. No, no hurt. We have support in the m and SMP, and in fact, we have a lot of support from the 82s, 83s, 84s, lots and lots and lots of support. <clears throat> now we need to see a price trigger. Uh, we need twenty eight ninety one. We need twenty eight ninety one print in order to start regaining uh, territory back to ninety two. Come on, market. And by the way, guys, this is a very tough day because we're still trading uh, in a very sideways market and basically we're expecting follow through in a sideways market. Oppie, 
Uh, you know, Wampi, I'm still debating that. Um, I'm still debating that. And here's why. Let me bring the chart. Because we're talking about, uh, we're talking about hard stops here. All right. So let me bring on the 30 minute. Okay. So here's what I have here. I have the 20 SMA and I also have minor support from prior price action from this high here. And I'm also having from Wednesday uh, and I'm also having this uh, uh, pre this uh, overnight high into the, 80, uh, into the uh, 88 zone. Other than that, I have these lows. I have this bar that uh, happened in the morning at 85. And I do have the 8450 with the 200 SMA. I'm also having a confluence area from these prior pivot highs. And I also have uh, the, uh, the 50. And I also have, uh, I also have the um, uh, minor support zone here into the, uh, into the 82. So I have a cluster of support here from eight, basically from 80 to 85. That's a very thick layer of support and price may want to gyrate within this area because we're still trading in a sideways market. We haven't committed to the upside or to the downside yet. As far as we're concerned, we're still trading where? We're still trading within an uptrend. We still have higher highs and we have a range. The market has peekabooed this morning into the 96 area and then it quickly retracted, uh, broke the base, into the 87, came back and retested the 85. That's why I decided to have the stop into the 85. The reason for the stop into the 85 is because the market came in, established a support at 85, it established a support into a major support zone here from the, uh, from the overnight at four o'clock, and then it rotated. The, tr the trigger price came in into 90. The trigger price came into 90 to confirm not only the trigger on the five minute high, but it also confirmed that it is ready to trade above these cluster of dynamic resistance levels created uh, 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 by these moving averages. So that's why 90 represented the trigger for a progression higher. And it came into 92 and then it started to gyrate again. Why? Because we're still trading very much sideways. Now it's up, you know, and, um, for definitely for uh, larger account sizes, 80 would make sense. And any pullback and rotation around this area uh, on, a, on a 15 minute or on a 30 minute would make sense for an ad. But as of right now, like smaller accounts and basically for all of us, we do have to stop at 85. Okay, so we're not gonna play around. I typically do not play around 90% of the time. I don't play around with stops. Uh, when we are in a trending market, when we are in a sideways market, I may add, I may reduce, I may play around with these stops, uh, and uh, I may look at price action a little bit closer. Does that make sense? Uh, Russell is still very bullish right here. And remember that, uh, you know, we, we did have a really nice continuation in Russell through the trading session uh, that actually has helped um, YM and has helped ES through the trading session yesterday. So far, the hard stop is 85. It just needs to see price action. So far, we have issued a 15-minute sell within the range. So we're still trading within the first progression of the 15-minute higher, but because we're in the range, 
we may see some sell going on here because of the 15 minute rotation to the downside. We are trading in this very, very, very sideways market. What I like to do, and uh, but that is only in a confirmed sideways market. I like to add at support and place the hard stop. Still keep the 85. So if we're going to get a little range into the 86 to 87 area, uh, and we need to see this uh, happen within the next 10 minutes or so, and we need to see it within a duration of at least 10 minutes. So we need the price consolidation within the next 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, then we may consider adding, let's say, at 86 or 87 and keeping the stop at 85 as if it is a separate trade. Okay, keep the hard stop at 85 for now. I'm just keeping a hard stop at 85 for now. What do I keep on clicking this? The 15 minute also suggests support into the 85 area, 85 and 84, and into the 82. We're back into the 30 minute 20 SMA. This is actually could be a uh, this could actually be again another shakeout lower. So we're still bullish because we're holding the prior overnight highs here, and as long as the price is sustaining the overnight highs, this represents a base breakout for higher. Uh, Brandon, uh, I have a whole day that I teach that in the class about pivot points. It's a lot to discuss uh, about these pivots. They're, um, they're alternate support zones. They're calculated based on, uh, they're, they're basically two sets of pivots that you need to take into consideration, the New York trading session pivots and the overnight pivots. And they're calculated based, uh, based upon prior days, high, low, close, and open. So they're, uh, they're, the, uh, they're, uh, they're once calculated on, um, um, I'm sorry, they're uh, first calculated into the, at 6, 6 p.m. Eastern for the Asian and European session. And there's a separate set of pivots that are working on the New York trading session. So you have to know how to combine the two. And you have to, you have to apply different setups of, uh, on those pivots. There are different strategies that you apply for those specific pivots. And they have different meanings. 
in terms of, you know, in, in terms of what strategy you need to apply at a certain pivot? And because let's say now the m and &E is trading into the first area of resistance and it's coiling at that point, it's showing us that it has relative strength and it's ready for a progression higher. As long as the median pivot point is holding into the 80s and the price got the lift and it was coiling and it is coiling right now. In fact, you could see it. Let me just shrink this a little bit. See how it's uh, trading into the first resistance zone. So the fact that it's coiling around that area gives us uh, gives us the, the uh, gives us a strong indication that the price may be ready to commit higher. There are a lot of functionalities for these pivots, and uh, it's definitely extremely important to know how to work with them. It it, it helps you as a trader. It's um, it simplifies your 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 trading, your decisions, especially um, in a fast-paced market environment. All right, we need to see a print of 90 again in order to start progressing higher. In fact, the first step into the right direction would be a print of 89, 2889. A print of 2889 will get us out of this uh, chop zone. If we see a print of 89. I hope that helps. Brandon, like I said, I have a, uh, we have a whole day dedicated to, uh, to, these, uh, to these indicators and how we use them. And we also have strategies built in into our technical analysis. Uh, notice that YM just made a new low and broke the 10 a.m. low. Uh, Russell, S&P, and NASDAQ still holding the 10 a.m. low. The one index that broke the 10 a.m. low is the Dow. Does not like the highs. Keep 85, uh, keep 85 hard. Uppy, if you want to give it a little bit of room into the 2880, I'm going to look for re-entry. 2880 is acceptable for a soft. Because you have the 84, you have the 83s, you have the 82s, at, and they're all clustering here. The one thing that I don't like is that it's going to issue that 30 minute, uh, 30 minute uh, sell. If the price is going to break above 28.89, let's see if we, I don't know if it's going to hold, but it needs 28.89 right now in order to start pushing higher. All right, so we need to trade above 89, then we need to trade over 93. I don't know. So remember, hard stop is 2885 I would have liked to have a soft stop here the only thing is that I'm uh, hesitant because uh, Dow is not, uh, Dow is um, trading below the 10 a.m. low, and that means it's uh, creating some weakness at this point. At the, on the other hand, I see here that um, gold may be ready for higher. Let's put an alert here. Yeah, over these highs, over 42.
We have the one and the two minute rotation. We need to see that 89 print right now in order to start progressing higher. Man, I would have loved to add here at the support zone, but I'm not going to because we're trading in a, in a damaged range. We don't have a real good established range. Um, Luis, 80, uh, 85, 85, Luis. Uh, skip, no, just have an alert. I have to watch price action. So far, it's dead. It's not doing anything. We're getting a five minute reversal if we uh, if we print at 28.89. I'll let you guys know. Um, I have to watch the price action to see for that. Okay, we're going for a five minute rotation here off the, uh, off of these uh, levels. Dale, uh, the S&P has strong support levels from 80 to 85. I, uh, I just showed that 30 minute chart and the one hour chart. They have huge levels of support into that 2880, but they also have a strong level into one hour. We have a confluence zone here that we talked about into the 2885. That's why I decided to have the, the hard stop into the 85. There are alternate support levels all the way into the 80s that are deriving from the 30 minute charts. You can see all these elements right here that we talked about. Five minute tapped onto the 10 EMA into the 88. It has issued a five minute reversal. Let's see if this is gonna hold. If this is gonna fail, keep the hard stop at 85. Keep the hard stop at 85. So we need to trade over 90 and then we need to trade over 91. These are gonna be key levels right now if we get an if we get a trigger of 91, we're going back up to 93 and possibly back into 95. YM needs to print over 50 in order to start progressing higher. 50 and 55 would put it back into uh, back on back onto the uh, back on, back onto the map all, uh, for a price trajectory into the 60 and 80. Russell very strong, not only proving a rotation off of the five minute, but also trading into the resistance at 1530. And higher again, relative strength. We have we're holding the 10 a.m. low and we're establishing a higher low. 
Wow, 180 rotation on the five minute. Keep the heart stop at 85. We're one tick away. One tick away from the stop. Keep the heart stop at 85. We're gonna be looking for re-entries. Out. Okay, ES stopped. All right, let's see how ES is handling the 80 zone. See what uh, SMP is doing? It's getting back into the support zone from the 30 minute. We're just gonna have to wait. This is strong support zone here. This was an algo push at 1106. This was an algo at 106. Did I say 106? I'm in 1106. I'm sorry about that. 1106. 1106. It was really nice trading the overnight because we had the break over 80 and we had a clear target into the 90. Those, these were like easy five points right here. All right, gold going higher. GC. Let's do GC long, GC or MGC, whatever you want to trade, depending on your account size. It's a, this is a semi swing. So it, it's going to have targets into the 140, uh, into the 1345. 
I'm just typing it. Hold on, it's trading at 141.60, so just wait. We want to see it well above this area here, so we'd have plenty of reaction time, okay? These are, uh, SMB looks higher from here. That was just an algo push. It was just algos messing up with, uh, with us. It has an, another two minute rotation to the upside. Th these are shakeouts. These are algo shakeouts. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about that, Herb. Look at this doji here. This was nothing but a shakeout. This is not a short here. For me. For you, you can do whatever you want. I'm just telling you my plan. Let's see here. In fact, the trigger here it would be actually thirteen forty two point eight. This is a bit early at thirteen forty two. Let's do this, GC or MGC, uh, GC or MGC, 1342.5. So scratch the 1342.5, uh, 1342, and remember, this is going to be more of a swing. Um, or you can use minis, minis or micros. Okay, Herb, I send you a little note. Okay, I have my order in, guys. I have my order in. 42.5. It's typed in the room. 42.5. Um... Indices not committing yet. Thank you. 
There's another target at 147.50. And another target at 13.49. Then we have the 13.50. It's in fact, it's 13.50.3, but we're going to be considering the 13.50 for now. And again, we're going to be trailing. So we'll see. All right, indices, garbage at this time. Sideways price action. They're holding into support, minor support, you name it. Um, NASDAQ came very quickly to, uh, to test the 7,500 and the New York trading session low. In fact, it's trading... into this overnight low here into the 90s. Confluence area all the way to 87. So it has support bands into the 87. We're almost at the triggering gold. When gold or micro or mini, whatever you're trading, is uh, trading um, at 13.45, place a stop to break even. <laughs> Dale, you bet. Well, yeah, I mean, we're trying to make money here and we're trying to go for the higher odds trades. All right, we're very close to trigger. Don't forget, GC went at 13.45, move the stop to break even. And take half the profit, take half off. Have some money in the bank. Okay, take half off at 13.45 and put your stop on the rest. That's why it's so great if you're using minis or micros, right? because you can do that instead of taking just one contract. If you take one contract, just move the stop to break even. See if I can get this on the four hour. Let's leave this on the four hour so you guys can see the, uh, can see the targets here. <clears throat> Let's go back in ES on the five minute. Here we go. 1342.5. See when I call the trigger, see how it accelerates higher? Because I know where the trigger point is. All right. This is a little resistance here into the 43s. Thank you, Herb.
Teamwork. I knew it. I knew it. Oppie, are you still in? Oppie, you still in? <laughs> awesome. Uh, the indices don't really have the structure for uh, for a pullback. They're range bound. 